Hello Internet, my name is Quinn and this is Blondie Hacks. And more importantly, this is hashtag thank you patrons day. This is uh, something that uh, the fine folks at Patreon have put on, uh, where all of us who uh, rely so very much on your generous support uh, decided to get together and put something out just to say thank you to all of you. So, uh, I thought it would be fun to do a complete cold start and firing up of a uh, steam engine using my electric steam boiler. I don't think I've ever shown uh, that entire process end to end of using the boiler. So uh, let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, let's dive in. Start with a quick tour of the electric steam boiler. We are indoors, you might have noticed, which was the whole idea behind this project. Uh, I wanted something that I could run uh, without all of the smoke and fumes of a, you know, a traditional coal-fired or gas-fired boiler that people traditionally build. So this is all electric, uh, very clean and nice to operate indoors. Uh, so let's see here, you've got a blowdown valve and drain valve, little drip tray there, and this is the water gauge here. Uh, fill course, uh, steam dome, it's got an expansion port for uh, driving other things, which I might want someday. Uh, this is the safety valve. This is set to 60 PSI. Uh, the kind of nominal operating pressure of the boiler is, is 50 PSI. Honestly, I typically run at about 35, uh, which, which is lots. Uh, and of course, fill plug here. And if we just turn this guy around to the end, you can see our pressure gauge here, and that's a PM Research pressure gauge with uh, the siphon. Uh, this is very important. This is the uh, thermo switch. This is uh, what adjusts the temperature. Uh, there's an electric heat heating element in the other end, and then this end is uh, basically the temperature sensor, and uh, it switches the electricals on and off, and uh, it's adjustable. And so this is the uh, adjustment knob right here, which you've seen me make on YouTube. Now, because uh, water uh, pressure or steam pressure is uh, proportional to temperature, uh, if we adjust this guy to change the temperature, we effectively set the pressure on the boiler. So it's a really convenient thing. I can literally just dial the pressure of the boiler up and down uh, as needed with that knob right there. All right, and if we keep going around, this is the uh, output pipe here for the steam, and this is uh, the uh, I, what I call the throttle valve. Uh, there's no pressure regulator or anything on here, so I just use this guy to kind of de facto adjust the pressure for the engine. And then this is the electrical box here. There's a power switch here and a fuse, very important. And uh, inside here are all the electricals, which you've seen me uh, build on YouTube as well. And uh, there's a contactor in here. And uh, hidden inside here is the back of the heating element. And it's uh, an industrial immersion heater. Uh, it's a one kilowatt heater, so that's inside the boiler. And the end of it sticks out here. And then all of the high voltage electricals are inside here. So the thermo switch that I showed you is controlling an AC contactor, which sits right here. And there's a little hole right here so we can see the uh, activation light on the contactor. So we know when the heating element is engaged. And if everything's working correctly uh, at the set point of the boiler, you'll see this light kind of turn on and off as the contactor is maintaining that, uh, that temperature level and by extension, that pressure level. Uh, all right, so with, that's the boiler in a nutshell. Uh, I'll get this turned around here and uh, let's get some water in it. So I use distilled water uh, in this boiler. The, uh, the tap water uh, where I live here, we're on well water, so uh, there's a lot of minerals in it and I don't want all those minerals collecting inside my boiler. And frankly, all tap water is gonna have more minerals in it than uh, distilled, so this will just uh, help extend the life of the boiler. So uh, take the fill plug out. Now I've got this custom 3D printed uh, funnel, which you saw me make on Instagram, if you follow me there. And that guy screws in there. And then I open the valve here just to let the air out while we fill it. And then I'm just gonna fill it until we're uh, about halfway on the water gauge. And uh, that's all there is to it. And the next step is to get our engine ready for running. Uh, this is a wobbler, which uh, is actually not the best engine to run on uh, live steam. Uh, these run much better on compressed air. Uh, as you'll see, they don't, they're missing a lot of features that a proper live steam engine should have. But I want to show this engine because uh, you know this content is all about uh, beginners and this is uh, the first engine that everybody's going to build. So I'll show you how to get one of these guys ready to run on live steam. So first thing we need to do is lubricate it and uh, because these are such simple engines they don't have uh, lubricators. So uh, all we're going to do is uh, just take the uh, cylinder head off here and we're going to get some oil down in that cylinder. And the oil that I'm using here is just a basic three-in-one machine oil. Uh, there are dedicated steam oils that you can get, and maybe they're better, but uh, 
for this little engine, this will work just fine. So get some oil down on that cylinder there and kind of work it around a little bit. And then we're also going to get some oil into all of these crank pin areas here. And we're going to get some uh, down in here on the main bearing. Now that uh, main bearing is oil light bronze, so uh, it's got oil in it already from assembly still, and uh, it's going to absorb oil that we add there. So but, uh, it doesn't hurt to get a little in there. And then a little behind the crankshaft here as well. Okay, and that's running beautifully. So we'll get the cylinder head back on, and then we'll be ready to uh, start building some steam. Okay, steam is up, so we're just about ready to go here. I'm going to do uh, one last minute oiling on my engine, which I neglected to do here, this interface on the oscillating cylinder. Okay, so uh, I like to uh, hook up the engine uh, after steam is built, just because uh, then this, all you see this water that's dripping down here, that's because you know, the steam pipe is cold and uh, so steam is condensing and you know, that water is just going to run into the engine. So, uh, but we're going to go ahead and hook this guy up now and uh, get my steam pipe in here. Now I mentioned that uh, this style of wobbler engine is not very good for running on live steam and one of the reasons for that is that it doesn't have uh, drain cocks on the cylinders. So uh, what that means is, similar to what you just saw there, this thing's going to be running mostly water at first because the engine is cold and the steam pipe is cold, everything's cold, so the steam is going to be condensing. So what we're going to get here at first is a whole lot of water. So towel ready because uh, with, with steam engines, first three rows will get wet. We'll just make sure that uh, our steam pipe is snug there. All right, this fitting may leak a little anyway, but uh, that's steam engineering in a nutshell. Things always leak a little. All right, let's give her a whirl here. Oh yeah, there's all that water. Okay. Initial startup is never dull, especially with a wobbler like this. All right, I'm gonna flush all that water out of there. Something you can also do is actually uh, flush the water out into a container like this before connecting the engine. But we live dangerously here on Blondie Hacks. And we're gonna have to run the flywheel by hand to flush some of that water out of there. And then as, as the cylinder and, and the engine heat up, then it'll, it'll stop condensing so much. There we go, we're starting to get real steam now. So a little more pressure, and this thing should start running. Very close now. There she goes. Okay, a little less there. Oh, a little bit of hydro lock there. A little uh, residual water coming in there. Okay. There we go. Now she's running. Very nice. Now the other reason that these engines are not very good for running on live steam, as you can see, is that uh, there's a lot being asked of this sealing surface here between the frame and the cylinder. And uh, because this is a beginner engine made only on a lathe, this frame here is actually not machined. So this seal in here is really not very good. So there is an exhaust port on the back, but we're also just getting a lot of steam out of this uh, cylinder interface here and uh, also out of the, the bottom of the, uh, uh, of the cylinder itself there, which uh, as the engine warms up, that cylinder and uh, piston interface will tighten up a bit and uh, we'll get less leakage out of the bottom there. And uh, the other reason that these engines aren't great for running a lot of steam is, as I mentioned before, there's no oilers on it. So we pre-oiled it and that'll run it for a while, but you know, you can only run this engine for, you know, maybe 10 minutes before you have to stop and, and oil it again. Uh, the steam is also self-oiling to some degree, but uh, uh, yeah, it, uh, it's going to need oiling after a little while.
there you go. That is a full cold start uh, of the boiler and a uh, steam engine running on live steam. Uh, if you'd like to know more about any of these projects, this engine and this boiler are really thoroughly documented on my blog uh, at blindyhacks.com. There's a link down there in the description for that. Uh, that's about it. Uh, thank you, patrons. Hashtag thank you, patrons. Uh, this is, uh, you know, it's really important to me that, uh, that all you guys support me. And this is, you know, your support is, is what makes all of this kind of stuff possible. So I really hope you've enjoyed the content. And thank you all very much for helping me make it. And uh, we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.